What's up? I'm here at the guys in Slow Coaster. Guys, thanks for coming in. We got Steven, Brian, and Mike. Thank you. Hello. Uh, thanks for performing for us today. Um, Darkest of Disco. Kind of different, ver I guess, a different version of that song. Um, but it's, it still holds up, you know what I mean? Well, that's actually how we wrote the song. We, we usually write our songs acoustically and piano and stuff like that, and then inject the rock into them afterwards. Cool. So that was probably more close to the original version, but who's keeping track? <laughs> um, how does it feel to have the record out and uh, you know, be playing this stuff live? And you know, are you guys comfortable with, with the record? And does, yeah. it take, does it take time to sort, of, to sort of get comfy with the new stuff? Mm. We, we actually, uh, you know, we developed the tunes live like at shows, we just start jamming them in the middle of our actual show before, you know, well before they end up on a record. So we're, we've been kind of comfortable with them for a while and, you know, that's, that's the way we usually finish the tunes is we just, you know, practice them in front of people for a while. So the final stage is putting them on an album. Yeah, yeah, yeah actually, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. cool. Um, you guys are from Cape Breton, right? Yeah. Um, and this is your fifth album, so, I mean, you guys have been a band for a long time. Just give people a little bit of history about your band and, uh, you know, coming from the East Coast. We hit the road uh, October of 2000 and basically haven't gone back. You know, we live, we still live in Cape Breton, but we've been on the road nonstop for 10 years almost. And it goes by fast and I'm still, you know, we're still inc incredibly happy that you can be in a band for so long and still have like a, a young audience and, and be fresh with your creativity and art and get the message out there, you know. Like, yeah. We haven't really done any kind of shame spiral as far as a band, you know, the, the pattern that a band will usually follow. So we've always been keeping it super fresh and, and it, you know, we're, we're a live band too, so we, we love to play live. Well, that's super important for you guys, the, the live show. I mean, uh, yeah, especially really, now, you know, like yeah. no, no one's really buying a lot of music anymore. They are and there aren't, but uh, the live show I, I, for us has always been super important. People go crazy at your shows. Is this they True. have been known to go crazy. Sometimes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and get drunk and end up passing out. Drink from their shoes. Sometimes it's like, like a Howard Stern <laughs> show. <laughs> at the, you know, we don't, we don't, uh, we reflect sometimes after shows are like that, like breaking barriers and people take their clothes off and all that kind of stuff. And we're like, what did we do? What did we say? We didn't say anything. How did we get those boobs out We there? didn't sing <laughs> anything. We didn't say anything. We didn't entice anything. It's a beautiful, it's beautiful. It's, it, viscerally, that's what music is all about. I mean, it speaks to the music anyways, yeah, for sure. Yeah, just go, go for it. We just like having fun, you know, like during our show, and I think people, you know, kind of get that. They just want to have fun too, so. Which is cool, yeah. because, you know, a lot of musicians take themselves way too seriously. We, oh, yeah, really? yeah. that's they? not our main thing, dude. Serious, seriousness is not <laughs> really? what we are. Yeah. And that's why we've, we've probably played <laughs> 2,000 shows in this band, and, ten, and no two of them have been alike. They're always different. We read the crowd. It's, it's almost like the crowd is the, is the other member of the band, and it's like, what do, what do you want to hear? What, how do you want to feel tonight? You know, and it, it's we been... ask them a lot too. We, you know, yeah. ask them what they want to hear sometimes. The darkest of discos is that why you guys did the video? You know, with the live show, and you, yeah. know, you get that sort of small club vibe. Yeah. Well, that was a, like that was just kind of like a theme that was kind of going on when we were <clears throat> writing the writing the tunes for the for the record, and it kept coming up. You know, this this discussion about how. You know, a lot of people that come out and see us, you know, a lot of girls in particular will get really dolled up, you know, get themselves looking really, really nice and new clothes and get their hair done, all that stuff, and then just go to some Shit dumpy, things. divey <laughs> bar. You know what I mean? Like, you know, girls and guys too, get yourself looking proper and then you go to the, you know, dingiest hole you could possibly go to and freak out and, you know, we go were, home with one shoe. It's kind of strange, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know. We were just in Japan. Just before the earthquake, oh, we, toured, no way. we toured Japan, probably about a month before. Whoa! And November. If you if you look at the darkest of discos video, that's basically a copy off of a club that we played in Japan. Oh no way! We were there. I think it was called the, it was a it was called the Golden Egg, and it was probably the worst bar I've ever been in my entire <laughs> life. But they, it seems like they did that on purpose. You worst know? slash best. Worst slash best yeah. bar ever. <laughs> yeah. It's Really and it was one of those unique. moments where I said, you know, you know the concept for our record, guys? That we're living it right friggin' now, man. So we kind of took the concept of that bar and rebuilt it in Cape Breton. Oh, cool. All the speakers and lights and things like that. Now, what about females dying after sets? Is that also... Hopefully it doesn't <laughs> happen very often. Yeah, that, that was Who's to say they're, they're dead, man? True. It's true. They Second season's speak. coming on next yeah. year, dude. Yeah. They could still be alive. It'd it's be true. like a lost thing. Maybe the island just moved, yeah, shifted it's Cape in Breton, time. man. Yeah, they could be sleeping with their eyes open. That's totally possible, too. Could have been... Roofies. 
Yeah. I haven't sleep in the last not. five Hopefully minutes. Not. I doubt it. Let's say yeah. not. Let's say no. any You guys don't encourage that. that. We don't encourage that at all, unless you're doing it to me, which I do encourage. <laughs> we don't encourage time travel either. Okay, no, cool. time travel is really hard on the body. Yeah. Not even DeLoreans? Wow. <laughs> we did. We, we landed. From, <laughs> you we landed from Tokyo to Calgary. And we were like, "What day is this?" And we're like, "It's Monday." We're like, "Again?" <laughs> <laughs> what was What was it like playing out there? I mean, that's uh, amazing. Culture shock yeah. a bit, or was it the first time you guys were over there? Yeah, it was the first time we were. Yeah. He's been there a few times. Yeah, I was there before, but it was it was always in with different types of musical acts. Like previous to Slow Coaster, I was there with a group that was all you know. Uh, playing uh, very proper, like early, early evening, you know, wine and cheese parties and yeah. stuff like that. So that was one side of Tokyo, but then this time it was like all the dirty rock clubs. It was awesome. You know, it was fantastic. Yeah. And was how, just, did, how did people respond to you over there? It was great. Like stage, cra yeah. sta <laughs> stage crashing and, you know, people just having a good time. Yeah. Uh, very polite, very polite audiences. They were. Really, it was funny. Like they, they would be freaking out during the song. At a club, and yeah. as soon as the song is over, it's like you're at a theater, <laughs> and, just, and it's very uncomfortable because you know, in in Canada or the U.S., you can say a few things, like you can be like, "How's everybody doing?" I'm just gonna tune my guitar here, but there, it's just like very uncomfortable. They're waiting. They're, oh, waiting, yeah. for, they're, totally they're waiting for to freak out again. No, they they it was the response was great. Like we can't wait to go back. Cool. That's one of our you know, our next goals is just to get back there and play somewhere outside. Love to do that. Uh, I have to ask about the band name Slow Coaster. You guys have probably been asked this billions of times but uh, why the yeah. name because some of your songs are slow but it's uh, you know it's oh it has nothing, nothing to do, do with that it's just a <laughs> myself and uh, Brian's been in the band for about five years and uh, before that there was another drummer we lived together in Vancouver we worked at a warehouse out there cleaning bins for organic delivery oh okay and their nickname was the slow coasters because they're from the east coast and they all are from the oh. west coast so they're like oh you slow coasters finish up with that work you know <laughs> blah 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 and I said to the, my boss, I said, I'm going to call a band that, and you'll be sorry, man. But you guys are a hardworking band. Absolutely. Yeah, we yeah. never stop. Like, we, yeah. I mean, we have uh, families as well. Like, Mike and I both have children, and uh, we kind of look, we take it very seriously. We take, so the, we take the band seriously, but not. Nothing the, but, else. But not. Yeah, yeah. You know? And that was one mandate, to not be serious. Like, and people feel that when you're on stage and you're if you're having a good time they're gonna have a good time if yeah. you look like you're super serious they're gonna be super serious you know it's a it's definitely a give-and-take between band and audience all the time where did you guys get that that's that's that side was that I guess Cape Breton man like yeah. our, our culture and our our heritage is all about music it's about kitchen parties yeah. it's about dancing you know that's just who we are as 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 a culture and uh, we took that and started playing reggae instead of fiddle tunes. Yeah. We play a lot of reggae and it's, and it's, yeah, it's, it's good times. How did you guys get into to reggae to begin with? You know, that's the uh, type Cape of Breton music. Cape Breton is the home of reggae. The home of reggae. For those of you not familiar music. with our culture, Cape Breton is the home of reggae music. Right on. Yeah. No, I've, I've, I've played a lot of reggae <laughs> in, in, on the West Coast. I went to see a lot of reggae. It was my first experience. I was probably about 19 at the time and I moved from Cape Breton to Vancouver and there was music that I'd never heard before and did you guys take like the punk route into reggae, or was it the reggae route? Uh, I personally... Because a lot of people go The Clash and then they'll go... I know, I was more like no. the, the old school. I, I actually, I'm a big fan of like old school dub, like King Tubby and okay, Scratch cool. Perry kind of stuff. Yeah, so yeah, I wanted yeah. to incorporate that. Get those bass lines going. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, oh, for sure, man. Well, there's only three of us too, right? So we have to kind of fill it up, but also leave some space at the same time. So it's having three people in a band is a great dynamic. Uh, most cartoon story you guys have had over your 10-year tenor? Pardon? Craziest cartoon-like moment being in a band. Cartoon, cartoon moment? Like yeah, moment where you're just like, this doesn't happen. It was right probably when we were turning into cartoons moment. for the patio video. Yeah, we were cartoons. We were, we were actually, actually cartoons. cartoons. <laughs> there was a cartoon moment. There was a cartoon <laughs> moment. There was a cartoon moment when we were actually cartoons. Yeah. Cool. What's that like being animated? Weird. Yeah, yeah it was cool. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. It's, was it for a video? Yeah, yeah, for the patio video. Okay, cool. Yeah. Everything, uh, every day is, yeah, is insane. We've been in you, this band for you 10 years. You wouldn't believe the like, shit that happens. Every day is crazy. It's ridiculous. Yeah. We, uh, we have our man Danny over there. We've been taking him on the road with us to take care of some stuff, and he's having a great time. It's his first time touring the country again. He's pretty much walking around with his jaw dropped open everywhere he goes. <laughs> yeah. And we're just like, what? what? Every day, man. Every day is a cartoon. I wish I, I could understand. specifically it. say one. I would say in, in Tokyo a few months ago where we, we have a song called Fuck Last Night. Yeah. And After in, porno. We play it in Canada. We do play it. We end our sets off with it and stuff, but they really took a shining to us. We had a little pocket of people that would follow us from show to show. 
And finally, the last show was at a bigger club, and they just couldn't take it anymore. And we played that song, and they completely broke the barrier. If you go on our Facebook fan page, you can see them all up on stage while we're singing Fossil. And I'm just, my facial expression is just kind of like, what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> uh, what are you guys listening to right now? Stuff that's uh, super current that you're digging on. Uh, Howard Stern. <laughs> Howard Stern. Cool. I'm listening right. to a band called He's a visionary. BTNT. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've heard of him before. Yeah. I've this band called Beats Antique, and cool. I've been listening to them kind of on my iPod and stuff. I don't know if you've ever heard of them or not. They're like a, they're like dub hip hop stuff only with uh, marching band instruments. Okay. It's That's very cool. Insane. It's very, very cool. Cool. Honestly, when, whenever we're traveling, we do listen to a lot of Howard Stern. Yeah. You know, we go Howard Stern, Reggae Station. When they fall asleep, I put on bluegrass music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I'm driving and they fall asleep, I put on the classic hip hop station. Yeah. Nice. So I, I sometimes listen, throw that on. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, to be completely honest, I don't listen to that much brand new music. No, me a, a lot of a lot of underground, like a lot of house music, a lot of club music and stuff. That's you know, I kind of I get into that a lot. But uh, yeah, just classic hip hop, Howard Stern and. Howard Stern's crazy, man. I, I, I remember listening to Howard Stern on 9-11. So I, he yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was we so heard Yeah, he would yeah. didn't the station. It yeah. was not. It's like a white noise, right? Like, we drive sometimes for 40, 50, 60 hours nonstop. We just drove from Lethbridge, Alberta to Cape Breton Island in 69 hours. So yeah. the, the talk radio just kind of turns your brain off. Yeah, totally. It puts you into that state of, of numbness. If you really want to turn your brain off, Howard Stern's good for that. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. I, I'll just let him talk and listen, take it in. Right on. Do you guys get down to the States often? or? Uh, not we so have often. in the past, but we, we haven't been doing a lot of state stuff lately. I don't know what it is, if it's just timing. I'm afraid or of American yeah. timing or whatever. No, I'm not. <laughs> I am. We played, in, we played in Nashville and Boston and places like that. Like, we've never really... We've been slowly creeping in, but you know, we're just trying to you know, secure our... our uh, Foundation in Canada first. That's a priority. Cool. You know? There's a big world out there too, man. Like just coming back from Asia was like, oh my god, there's a billion people over here that isn't that you know you can just yeah. tour endlessly, endlessly for the rest of your life, and never see the same part of the world twice. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's cool that you guys got over there. Was it like a Canadian showcase or was it your own thing? Or? Uh, Japan Music Week. Okay, yeah. Uh, so we, I, was gonna... I saw it. it. Was coming up. Answered a few emails. Sent some paperwork yeah. in and thought it was a good idea. And we, yeah, we it's kind of how we roll. Yeah. It's like, where do you guys want to go? Let's go to London. No, yeah. let's go to Germany. No, let's go to Japan. Oh, okay, that sounds cool. cool. Yeah. Like I said, there's only three of us, so we can pack up and go wherever we want. Yeah, we don't have to make moment. sense. Last question. Mm -hmm. uh, I ask all East Coast bands this. Have you guys encountered uh, the Trailer Park Boys in your travels? Yeah. Oh, yeah. A bunch of times. Yeah. Yeah. Any yeah. good stories there involving bubbles or? Uh, let's no. see. Booze hash cursing. Yeah. Nice. There you go. I love it's it. It's really all. not that different from our regular lives. <laughs> totally. Oh, and trailer. And that's why it's so damn funny because yeah. it's it's real, you know. Yeah. I think every Canadian can relate to that shit. Every Canadian. Can, it's it's not just an East no, Coast thing. Guys, it's a everyone world knows thing someone now. That, yeah. like that. Somewhere. Those guys are amazingly talented, and they deserve yeah. every bit of success they're having. Yep. Yeah. Throw like, money at those guys. And I mean, Mike was. You know, in the, in oh, the yeah. music scene, sandbox, yeah, yeah. yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, well, yeah. I've actually opened up for him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really? we had our, some bands. Mine and Mikey's old yeah. band. We opened for Sandbox. Yeah, you know, yeah. And did he wear the, the top of the glasses? Game, back no, that was no. A, the, the bubbles thing is actually an impression that he used to do back in the day. It was just a general. It had no name or or anything like that. The the creator, legend. Mike Clattenberg was actually my upstairs neighbor when I was oh, 20, get 20, 20 years old. So all the things that he does in Trailer Park Boys, he would come downstairs. And we'd have a little spliff now and then, and he would talk about his <laughs> ideas, like the Green Bastard or... Mr. Leahy. Or all those things, right? They were all like... No way. A lot of those things in Trailer Park Boys were like compartmentalized different like movies or shorts that he had had in mind. And then uh, I moved to Vancouver, like I said, came back and he had the show, and I was like, no way. That's awesome. Yeah, he's, very, he's a genius, like yeah. Lattenberg, for sure. Yeah, it's a great, great, great. They're great all show. fantastic. They're all great. They've hosted the ECMAs like two years yeah. in a row or something. Yeah. Which you guys got, you guys nominated for four? four? For four How'd that right go? Now, or is yeah. it, did it, Oh, uh, they're next, next week. Next weekend. Next weekend? Okay, yeah. so best of luck. So Thank I you. guess you guys go out there and <laughs> get dressed to... up and go to the show and get yeah. all awarded out. Yeah, well, well let's hopefully. see. Well, we'd like to, like to take home one. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Have you guys been nominated in the past? Or? Yeah, yeah, we won one. Oh, yeah. We won okay, cool. record a few years ago. Okay, Four cool. years ago. So hopefully you guys <laughs> double up. Word. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for coming in, fellas. Thanks I shake your hand, but I know you're sick. I know, I know, dude. You don't I'm not sick. Thank you. I like punching I'm all right. Thank you, dude. Explore Music wears English Laundry Apparel.